Coming to you from the Stata Center at MIT, my name is Matt McGann, and this is ZigZag. <music> Commencement week is always a special time of year for our graduating students, but it's also an occasion for our alumni to reflect upon how MIT has shaped their lives. Many graduates come back to campus for tech reunions to keep up with current events at the Institute and to catch up with old friends. Tech Reunions 2006 was a festive affair, attracting a record number of alumni and guests, participating in a rich assortment of activities. Welcome, or should I say to many of you, welcome back to MIT. Alumni come back for a number of reasons. Some people come to reconnect with old friends, and a lot of people come to have an opportunity to meet the people they never really got to know. There are a number of highlights of Tech Week. One of them is our traditional tech night at Pops, which we've been doing for 106 years. We buy out Symphony Hall and classes from the senior class to the oldest alumni come, and we have a great time. Technology Day, which brings together a series of faculty, is a wonderful opportunity to get up to date on what's going on at MIT. And during Tech Week, we have one of our three times a year broadcasts for the Enterprise Forum, which is based in Kresge Auditorium and then broadcast around the world. One of the nice things about tech reunions is that you cut across all the classes and you have an opportunity to bring together somebody from the fifth reunion class and somebody from the 40th reunion class and they can talk to each other. They can find out how they built their company. They're great events. Everyone who comes wants to come again. They'd recommend it to a friend. So I think the important thing is it will be even better if we can get a larger percentage of each class participating. For the class of 1956, this year's reunion was especially memorable, as 2006 is the year they finally get to don the legendary red jacket bestowed upon every MIT 50-year reunion class. My name is Mal Blotner, and I was in Course 10. You know that we do it by numbers here. Course 7. Course 16. Course 10. How did it feel when you first got to put on the red jacket? Well, exciting. And this is my dad's red jacket. My dad was class of 28, also in civil engineering. The last time I was here was 1988. My son graduated from here, so it was. Uh, it's a, it brings back a lot of memories. I worked with a whirlwind computer, which was a whole room full of, uh, you know, tapes and all kinds of other gadgets. Do you remember how many women were in the class? And from what I have been told and we've tried to figure out, if you only count the entering freshmen, it was 13. And then eight graduated. In 56, there weren't many people of color. I came to MIT primarily because I wanted to make sure that no one ever doubt my credentials. And that has helped. I've been waiting 50 years for the privilege of wearing this jacket and walking down in the procession. 50 years I've been waiting for this. What a kick! After graduation week, you might think that things would slow down a bit here at MIT, but that's not entirely the case. Almost before we had a chance to catch our breath, 50 K-12 educators arrived on campus for the week-long Science and Engineering Program for Teachers, or SEPT. We sat down with the founder of SEPT, Professor Ron Latanison, who told us more about the program's educational mission. The origin of the program and the intention of the program has always been to provide teachers with the perspective uh, of an MIT faculty on what science and engineering means in terms of our whole standard of living. So our goal today is not only uh, to deal with the question of technical literacy in the broadest sense, but also to encourage young people through their teachers to pursue their interest or to develop interest in science and technology and to become part of the infrastructure of the future in the United States. Good morning uh, and welcome to MIT on the behalf of MIT's physics department. The program runs for a full week. We describe it at the outset as being typical of the MIT educational experience, and that is as a drink from a fire hose. I, I definitely had a biology fire hose yesterday. I had no clue what was being said, and that's okay. I, mean, I, I don't think that you can ever come into a program like this expecting to absorb 100% of what's said, and they don't expect us to, I don't think. I hope not. <laughs> Each day, is, it's 
literally mentally exhausting by the time you get to the afternoon. It's like you've, you've gotten so much information, so much useful information, actually. You see here the, the primary, red on the outside, blue on the inside, and here you see the secondary. We talk about rainbows, something as simple and beautiful as a rainbow, and how a rainbow is created, and looking at the, the mathematical aspects of a rainbow. So you'll never look at a rainbow again the same. We have thought over the years it would be very useful if we could export what we have done on campus to other locations. And so this year we are actually broadcasting uh, the program in this summer live to the, over the internet. There are a group of about 35 uh, teachers who are in a classroom at the University of uh, Rhode Island and they're participating interactively with the teachers who are on our campus. My hope is that I can take this information back to my students and when I'm in calculus class or pre-calculus and they ask me, when am I ever going to use this, then I can give them a real live application that, look, this is research that is currently going on and this is how it can be used and applied in the real world. As regular viewers of ZigZag know, for the past several years, the MIT campus has become a preferred nesting site for mating red-tailed hawks. This year, for the second time, AMPS, MIT's media production group and the producer of ZigZag, was able to videotape and webcast the maturation process of two chicks. On Easter weekend, these eggs were cracked open, not by children in search of chocolate, but by two baby hatchlings in search of space. Space to stretch and grow, and eat, and grow, and grow, and grow. Nourished by a plentiful supply of food from their expert hunter parents, the chicks seemed to double in size each week. Soon, a global audience was enjoying their day-to-day -day activities. A virtual community gathered around the nest as hawk watchers traded observations and insights on the Hawk Cam blog. Together, we all shared in the excitement of sibling rivalry, parents being parents, curious first wanderings from the nest, and, as graduation week approached, their maiden flights. We wish our fledglings the best as they explore the world beyond MIT. We were fortunate to watch them grow and learn, and we also learn from them. That's all the time we have for now. From the Stata Center at MIT, I'm Matt McGann. Thank you for watching ZigZag.